Well, tonight, President Joe Biden and the U.S. oil industry are at each other's throats over the cause of the historic U.S. oil and gas prices. At a time when Americans are feeling pain at the pump, the U.S. oil industry is making record profits. President Biden has made it clear he wants a future in renewable energy, but he wants U.S. oil to drill more now to offset the lack of supply. This, as U.S. oil and Republicans are claiming Biden's regulation is the cause of the high prices because they are stifling production. In today's Ag and Energy Insight, Josh Many speaks with an energy financial analyst who says the reason for high oil and gas prices is a lot more complicated than the polarizing rhetoric. Institute for Energy Economics and Financial Analysis Clark Williams Derry says the U.S. is not insulated from the global oil and gas market. If there is any disruption in the global supply chain, U.S. consumers feel the pinch. We as a country, for some reason, probably because the oil industry has lobbied to make it so, we are now integrated into the global markets. We are now basically on a roller coaster ride of, of high prices, low prices, prices that we do not control. Decisions that are made in Beijing or Moscow are now affecting pocketbooks in, you know, in Fargo. There is trepidation in the markets. No company wants to make big investments when they don't know whether they'll be knocked again by another global disruption. The global oil markets have been buffeted repeatedly over the past two years by forces beyond the U.S.'s control. It's been battered by COVID, it's battered by Ukraine, the, the Russian sanctions, the European response to Russia's invasion. Uh, all those things are combined to create sort of a perfect stor storm for gasoline prices in the U.S. Given the fact that two years ago, the pandemic drove U.S. oil prices below negative and producers were paying people to take their oil because there was not enough room to store it, oil industry executives executives are acting in their best interest by cautiously adding new production. A lot of oil companies don't want to right now. They've got private land that the U.S. government has no control over. And they've got a, a backlog of permits, drilling permits on federal land. Many of them are not being used. And the reason why is, well, frankly, the oil industry is telling its investors, we would rather be turning our cash back to you, our investors, rather than producing more oil. We're actually enjoying high prices. We're generating cash. We're not drilling so much. We're saving money on drilling. We're generating dividends and share buybacks. So it's the oil companies themselves who are saying, look, we don't want to produce more right now. In addition to the oil side, there is also a problem with refining. Because Europe is curtailing its purchase of grades of Russian crude oil, U.S. refiners are readjusting to serve European countries and other rebounding markets. Essentially, U.S. Com consumers are now competing against Chinese consumers, against European consumers for the same oil and same gasoline. You know, when you have a limited pot and, a, and you sort of stir the pot, well, now everybody is actually sort of like, you know, we're all competing, we're all bidding up the price of gasoline. Um, you know, that's kind of the way that a, 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 a supply and demand is supposed to work. Williams Dairy points out there were more drilling permits issued under the first year of Biden than there were under any year of the Trump administration. There was not a slowdown in federal permitting uh, on federal lands. It just didn't happen. Uh, and so claiming that there was some kind of sort of you know, roadblock put in the way of production, it doesn't show up in the numbers. In short, Williams Dairy asserts that claiming that the Biden administration is to blame for high gas prices is political posturing that is divorced from a serious analysis of the oil and gas markets. And next time, Josh will speak with lawmakers and other energy financial analysts about long-term issues driving high energy prices and examine the efficacy of President Biden's proposed gas tax holiday. Speaking of